conversation turned over into past illnesses that we've had before. And uh, I told them, you know, different, everybody was just talking about different times they had just gotten so sick. And I told them that there was three times that I can remember that the absolute sickest that I had ever been was, uh, y'all probably ain't going to really know this. Sister Sheena's going to know every single one of them. One was when Amanda Lee died. One was the night we went to a fellowship meeting or something in Douglas. And I got sick on the way home from that and was sick for weeks afterwards and just couldn't ever bounce back from that. And then the, the third the third one um, was I missed my Aunt Melinda's wedding, actually, because I was just so sick. And I got to think, you know, as, sick, as bad as they make the virus sound like it is, and it really is, it, it, it can be really, really bad. But for me, it wasn't. And it's like, if you go trying to compare it, Whatever those other instances were that I had just seemed to be so much worse. But the funny thing about those other times were nobody else in the house got sick. I was just the only one. And just kind of thinking of that a little bit as the day went on and how it can be times where we feel like we go through some stuff all by ourselves and absolutely nobody has any idea of what's going on. And sometimes... We are at fault for that. But nobody does know what, what's going on because we won't tell anybody what's going on. We try to carry the world on our shoulders and we try to let everybody think that we're okay when deep down inside we're not. Because when God created human beings, he created a very, very complex individual. And the way that the you know, personalities differ Sometimes our moods can change in a moment's notice. Sometimes we wake up in a great mood. So, you know, sometimes I get into some, a mood where I just, I'm going to conquer the world. I'm going to wash all the vehicles. I'm going to clean the house. I'm going to clean the yard. I'm going to do everything. There ain't going to be a single thing left to do on my to-do list when the sun goes down because I'm just going to knock it all out and get it all done. Then there are other days... I'm getting ready for work, and I open, I pull open up my sock drawer, and I pull up two socks, and I put one back because it's inside out, and I just don't feel like turning it back the right way. So I'll dig around in there and try to find me one that's already right side out to go with the one I have so I can go. No one really and truly, I ain't saved time nowhere because the time I stood there digging for the other one, I could have turned the one I had back right side out and would have been done with it. And if you had any time today at all, and, and y'all probably did, sitting, you know, kind of trying to watch the news and trying to watch the, the polls and go trying to, you know, they were, I seen some, they had their little pieces of paper wrote down and they were writing down all the states that were left and how many electoral votes they were worth and they were breaking things down quicker than the news channel could of, well, if, you, if this one wins, this one, this one, this one, and this one, that'll be good, that'll be, that'll be, it'll be close, but everything will be fine. And they, they suddenly just become experts in what they were doing. And all, really and honestly, they were doing was just stressing themselves out over something they have absolutely no control over whatsoever. And I know some that stayed up to, and you, some of you may have, and if you did, I'm not knocking you for it, but stayed up to... The wee hours of this morning, just, just trying to hope, even though they've been saying all along the results were going to be days before we find anything out. So I did my normal routine around 8.30 last night. I went ahead and I went to bed. And if I'm awake or I'm asleep, I'll just Google it when I first wake up in the morning. I'll do ball games that same way. Me sitting here watching it ain't going to matter a bit in the world. When I get sleepy, when I get tired, I'm like a young and I guess I go find me a bed somewhere and I go to sleep. Sometimes, like, there are some evenings, y'all, I'll sit there and look at the clock and go, is it acceptable to go to bed at 7.30? <laughs> you know, is it socially acceptable? Will I get talked about? You know, 8 o'clock kind of seems to, especially with the time change, it's even worse because now it's been dark for two hours and it feels like it's 10 o'clock at night and on top of the day that everybody's had and trying to figure out, I ain't, I ain't going to lie, we all feel a little sluggish, but even on the days that we feel sluggish, even on the days that we don't feel like conquering the world, even on just not wanting to just be around anybody, just sometimes on just our, what you may say, a bad day, we still know every day we can trust the Lord in everything. 
And I know I've used this example before, but Sister Sheena was following an individual, and they 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 they, they did a turncoat move. It really is what they did. They went from God has control over everything. You put all your faith in God. You do you know that's who you rely on. And then the next thing you know, some events happen in their life, and then all of a sudden it's. Don't sit and wait for God. You do for you. You've got to do this. You depend on yourself. And that is a very, to me, I was thinking, well, for you to have went completely one side to the other. Because we always have said when we always agree and we all know because of what we've heard preached for years and what we know to be true because of what we've seen God bring us through in our lives and in our past. And like Brother Charles said, even in the days when things were just totally different. When my frame of mind was totally different, God still was there with us. He was still there willing to help. He was still there willing to give guidance. He was still there with open arms. No matter how far off the bubble we was get, we ever got, God was still right there. And he's still with us today even while even every day we're striving to be closer to him. And we're striving to be more like him. And we're wanting to see that day come when the eastern sky split and know, to know that when we know that God is returning when the rapture happens, we'll have reason to celebrate. We'll have reason to dance around like Elizabeth was a while ago. We won't have to be scared. We won't have to worry about what's happening right now, what's going on, what's happening. You know, sometimes those that feeling to me is one I don't like having. I don't like being in a situation where I'm having to look around and try to figure out what exactly is going on here. What is happening? Because some, there's times where God can try, and maybe not just God, but we'll be in situations. I know I told this the other day, but me and Samantha got in the deer stand, and we hadn't been in it 10 minutes. And she looked over at me, and she whispered, I just heard two gunshots. Y'all, there had not been a gunshot. Not a single, not a single one, nothing. And I looked at her, and I said, no, baby, you, ain't, you haven't heard a gunshot. And so... But I knew the way that she had been through previous times that she had been hunting with me, she had heard something. She didn't just make it up out of thin air. So I started listening. What did she hear? And the next time the breeze blew, I heard two just real light knocking sounds, just a dunk, dunk. And I got them thinking, I thought, okay, that was something. And a young one would think that was a far off distant gunshot. And I got to listening for it, and it done it again, and I got to look, and I said, that's two trees hitting each other when the wind blows. So I look up, and directly above us is what they call a widow maker. It's a tree next to ours had died and fallen and was hung in the tree that our stand was in, and at any point in time, it's going to turn loose and come round down on top of up, or that, that stand at the time. We moved it since then to get it away from that. But as soon as I realized we were in somewhat of a dangerous situation. And if I had been by myself, it really wouldn't have been all that bad. But knowing that I had her up there with me, just sick in my, it just, it just felt, the feeling in my stomach was just indescribable. It was just, because I kind of felt like in my mind, I have just endangered my child. So I didn't even look down from it. I looked up at it like me staring at it was going to make it stay there. And I just, and still looking up at it, I said, Samantha, climb back down. Get on the ground. We can't stay in here. And, of course, anybody probably would have, but especially a child. Why? I'll explain it when we get on the ground. Just climb down now. And she climbed down the ladder, and I got everything out of the way and, and lowered everything down with a pull rope. And then I climbed down, and, and then I pointed at it, and I told her, and I said, and I kind of used it as a teaching moment for Anybody going to be in the woods, before you climb up in your deer stand, don't you know, look in your stand to make sure everything looks safe and it's still tight to the tree and everything's secure. But also look up above it. Look beyond where you're going to be. Look above your head because that could be where the danger comes from. And I got to thinking on that just then, like I just said. Think above where you want to be. I'm, you know, all the classes that I had to go through when I was going to STC and they were, you know, it was all about, you know, once you're out of school, it's time to hit the field and find you a job. So we're going to give you every tool that you can think of that you would ever need to get a job. They made us go through uh, a, a simulated or fake, whatever you want to call it. They, they would tell you, they would hand you a card one day and say, next week you're going to interview for a job for this company. 
We're going to be the people interviewing you. You act like, but we need you to really act, put on the show. This is where you want to work at. You need to look it up, study it, learn about this kind. They would give you real company. And they would actually sit there in that chair and want, and just critique everything that you did, the way you sat in the chair, if you leaned on the table, the way that you spoke. If you didn't shake every one of them's hand when you walked in, they docked points and they just, they said, we're going to really make sure that you know how to get a job. And one of the biggest things that they, they stressed was always never show up dressed for the position that you're applying for. Show up dressed for the position that you want above it. You know, if you're showing up the interview for a job of a janitor, Show up dressed like the CEO of the company. Look above. And I've heard T.D. Jake said that he, you know, when he was preaching and began, he knew that he wanted to be a pastor one day. So he began to kind of carry himself and talk and learn how to act like a pastor. And then as he began to move, and he just always was seeming to, people kind of thought maybe it was arrogance, but it was just him just wanting to make sure when I get to that point, I want to be ready in my mind. So there's not the cultural shock. There's not the initial. If I had took the time to look above that tree stand, I would have seen the danger before and beforehand, and we would have never climbed up in it and ever been in that situation. Sometimes we find ourselves in situations that come upon us. We have absolutely no control over what happened. Y'all seen the video a few weeks ago where the hiker somewhere out west was walking in the mountain line decided that she didn't want him there anymore and she never attacked him but she just kept walking down the dirt road towards him and as long as he backed away she just kept walking towards him and then finally he got far enough away from whatever she was wanting him to get away from she went back to where he was going she knew there was something around there that he didn't want but he didn't have any control over that thing walking out in the road and coming after him Sometimes we can cause the situation to arise and we can cause things. Sometimes we can sit there and just kind of, we can stir the pot and we can just allow it to grow. And sometimes we can, sometimes you'll know in your mind if I just keep quiet, this will all go away. It's kind of like that dinosaur in Jurassic Park. If I just don't move, it won't see me and it'll go away. But I just can't do it. I can't stand it. I've got to say, I've got to do something. And I'm not saying not to ever stand up for yourself. I'm not saying that there's not ever times when it is better to speak up and it is better to say something and let people know where you stand. I'm not saying to be a pushover. But what I'm saying tonight is the situations that we can find ourselves in. You know, the other day I was going down the road and, and Sister Sheena called me on the phone and, and she said, look, you're going to have to come back home. Your, your dogs are tied up and they're fighting and we can't get them to stop. And I said, well, how are you sure they're not playing? Because they will roughhouse pretty good bit like they're a couple of puppies, but they're huge. No, they, these dogs are just, they're, they're fighting like crazy. And, 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 and Pebble's Pep spraying them with the water hose now, and they won't quit. And I'm thinking, well, if they're at that point, if that's not going to work, you're going to have to take things up a notch. Find something hard like a stick and start swinging it until it stops. <laughs> But I'm on my way, so I had to make a U-turn real quick and come back to the house, and it took me 10, 15 minutes before I got back to the house. And both dogs, poor things, was about to give completely out and just couldn't hardly, just both of them panting, just could not breathe, and just, but they just still was just not sure. They acted almost like they didn't know what was going on. And I wish they were people so I can ask them what in the world is this all about because nobody knows what it was over nobody knows what triggered it nobody knew what happened but if you look at them now they're out there wagging their tails at each other wanting to play <laughs> so I don't know what the situation was to come up in them but I didn't have any idea but I knew that there was a situation there that I needed to it needed my attention I couldn't say well one of them will get the better of the other one and they'll be fine it sounded like, from what Sister Sheena was telling me, I kept picturing Old Yeller and the wolf fighting. And that's a sure enough good one if you ain't ever seen that. Hopefully everybody has. And I thought, it sounds like I'm just rambling, but sometimes, you know what, and that, I'm going to stick on that just for a second because I sometimes I use it for making a joke or something. 
when the, you know, everything looks like it's all right. The two boys is in the house. The mama's outside. They're burning the cow. They had come up with the rabies. And all of a sudden, you hear the mama holler for Alice to get his gun. There's a wolf. Well, he runs out there. He gets his gun. And he's, as he's trying to go out there, he'll, here comes old Yeller. You know, he's going to save the day. He's going to fight the wolf. And more or less sacrificed himself. And everything kind of ended the way the movie ends. And you look at it, boy, that was just great. He just he sacrificed himself. But you get to thinking about it. Yeah, but if he'd have just stayed back and let Alice shoot him, he'd have been fine. Sometimes we cause more damage to ourselves than what we need to. Some days, like I said, I wake up, I want to do everything. I want to clean the yard. I want to run circles around the house. I want to do all the laundry. I want to take everything off the bookshelves and wipe everything down and put them back. And I want to deep scrub and clean everything. And sometimes I have no control over when those urges hit me. One hit me at about 10 o'clock Sunday night. And I'm thinking, no, I got to go to bed. I got to get up early in the morning. I got to go to work. And I was just, I got to clean something. I got to clean something. Y'all thought I had snorted something. <laughs> and I finally just laid in the bed and it took me forever to go to sleep. And normally I'm the type of person that as soon as my head hits the pillow, I am out. So on any night that I lay in there for 10 to 15 minutes and I can't go to sleep, I'm trying to figure out what's wrong. Man, what's going on? I can't get cut. There's something wrong with my pillow. Why, if I, if I, if I, do I not have enough blankets? Do I have too many blankets? Is that fan on high? Did I, did I, did I feed the dogs? That? My brain would just begin to constantly run and go and go. And I had a lot of classes for stress management say that when you get that way, just get up, turn on the TV, and go watch the TV for a little while. Don't lay there stressing yourself out because you're thinking that you've got to go to sleep. You're not going to sleep. And I'm thinking, but I want to go to sleep. I know that I need the rest. I know that I need to take care of myself. And I know I need to prepare for my day of work tomorrow. But just as sometimes it's just not possible. It's just not there. Sometimes we know I just need to slow down. I need to do something different. But just everything, life just keeps coming. And it seems like we can't slow down. We don't know what's happening next. And we done missed our turn. And we, we were supposed to have done something else. And we're still running for all that we can. And we just don't know what's going on around us. But um, I'm going to read Proverbs chapter 3. A few verses. Very familiar. And... Even when, I mean, I know it sounds easy to say, and I say it a lot of times, don't get so worried and stressed out about things we can't control. Because all it's going to do is continue to stress us out even more. And like I was trying to talk about the other night, and we have enough going on for us to add more to it. For us to just continually keep loading our car and just keep trying to worry about this and worry about that one and worry about this. Yes, we're supposed to love our brothers and sisters and yes, we're supposed to care about them and, and be concerned and check on them. Like I said a while ago, I was coming home a while ago and, and come up on a, on a wreck and they were detouring everybody up down the dirt, uh, Brady, that dirt road that goes out around Brady Farms because they didn't want people to go past the wreck. And I asked one of the workers as I was going through, I said, man, what happened? And he, and he kind of looked at me, looked around like he wasn't supposed to say that, and, and he told me that a semi-truck was turning in at the farm, and a motorcycle had went up under the semi-truck. And I shivered, and I said, good gracious, man. And he said, yeah, it's, it's not good. So I went on, I got thinking. A buddy of mine that I work with has just bought him a motorcycle, and he rides it in the evenings when we get off work. So I got my phone and I called him. And before you said, oh, brother, man, you, you talking on the phone while driving. I was on a dirt road. Oh, and I, I called him and it felt good to me when he answered the phone. Yeah. And I said, hey, bud, I just wanted to check on you. Rick, you know, told him a story about what happened involving a motorcycle. And I just, I didn't, I want to make sure you was home. And he said, woo. He said, man, I was riding, my, I was riding earlier, but I never went that way. I said, all right, well, you know, I don't know who it is or what all's going on or the conditions of anybody, but we need to be praying. And he said, we sure do. So, and that's why, and that's, you know, I've been thinking about it because I mean, it just happened a little while ago. And, and even with that, you know, that's 
Be concerned. Not, well, if it wasn't them, oh, well, who, who cares? Whatever, no. We're supposed to care about one another, but we can't allow other people's problems that we have nothing to do with become ours. And we can let them. You can just take on so much that you can't even function anymore and because you got your mind so tied up, but we're supposed to be letting God take care of things. Uh, Proverbs 3 and 1 says, My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck and write them upon the table of thine heart. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Yes. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Those last three we just read, the trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not into thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Acknowledge him and he'll direct your path. If you don't want to acknowledge him, you want to try to stumble around in the dark and try to pick your own way, and, you know, there was, there was there's been times before in, in, in anybody that's ever spent any time in the woods, I don't care who you are, even Daniel Boone got lost from time to time. You just, it ain't, it ain't nothing unmanly to admit to to just say, well, I got turned around and it took me a little while to get my bearings right and figure out where to come out at. But sometimes people don't want anybody to know. If I get lost out of the way, I don't like getting lost, period. If I'm in the road, and thankfully the, the generation that we live in now, and the world we live in with GPS has actually gotten a little bit better than it was a few years ago. It, it's kind of hard to get lost anymore because you got GPS on your phones. Most of your cars now has got GPS built into them. And it makes things a little bit more convenient. But before any of that ever happened, if me and Sister Sheena tried to go to go anywhere on a trip, I did not like, you know, she sometimes would take getting lost as, well, that's just part of the adventure. It's fine. Let's just enjoy it. And I can't. I don't know where I am. I don't know how to get back home. I don't know. We went to a concert to see uh, the Crab Family in Albany one night, and I printed off a map quest. And y'all went done great. Told us exactly how to get there. And I thought, well, to come home, we'll just follow that same list in reverse. Nope. That's what I thought we were doing. About two hours later, we're going down the road, and I get to looking, and I'm thinking, you know something? I know it's dark now. It was daylight when we came down, but I'm not seeing anything that looks familiar. Where the world are we at? Well, we come across and I looked up. We were going past a water tower that said Camilla, Georgia. <laughs> so I reached over the dash and I opened it up and I got a state of Georgia map and I handed it to Sister Sheena and I said, find Camilla and see where in the world we are. Y'all, we were headed straight down to Florida. <laughs> I said, how in the world have I done that? So we had to go old school on that one and follow that map until we got back somewhere where we knew halfway where we were. Now, I was good there, you know, just didn't, I had to just, we did not know. We were completely lost, and thankfully, we had the map. There was another time that we had went with somebody, I can't remember who, but we had went to Wild Adventures, and some of y'all that's let me go off with some of your youngins with us might get a little worried when you hear me stop telling this story, because I've never told it before, but y'all, when we pulled in the driveway that night, I don't remember the drive home. I don't know if I was half asleep. I don't know what happened. We all got home. We were all safe and sound. Nothing. Else. But I still, to this day, keep looking back on that, and it scares me when I think I don't remember half of the ride home. But thankfully, God must have, and you know, lean not to your own understandings. Don't be wise in your own eyes. Don't sometimes in life, and I, you know, you. Don't become some kind of professional Jesus take the wheel and think God's just going to direct that vehicle to go wherever you want to. Don't go to sleep behind the wheel of a car. But with life and how things is going on around us, let God drive. 
We'll get lost sometimes. We won't know where we are. We'll sing like, sometimes when you're driving, it just seems like it's foggy. But you ever notice sometimes with a fog, if you just keep driving, you eventually come out of it? Or you, it's real smoky, you get driving down the road, and there's some farmer or somebody's burning off some field, and there's just a bunch of smoke coming across the road. If you just pull over and stop and breathe in that smoke, or just for however long you're going to be there, you may end up getting sick, if not killing your own self. But if you just keep driving and pushing through to the other side of it, you'll be fine and keep going. I know that Danny Gokey song where you, sometimes you just haven't seen it yet. You're closer than you think you are. You may think everything is so far away, but actually the end of what we're doing, the finish line of what we're going through, could be right in front of our noses. It's just so thick with fog and smoke and different things that we can't see it. Trust in God. Give Him all of it. Acknowledge Him in everything that we do and let God direct our paths. Just because we can't figure it out, just because we don't know what's going on, doesn't mean that God does not know. God knows all. He has it all figured out. So fear the Lord and depart from evil. Sometimes the evil side seems like it has the answer. It can give you exactly what you need to come out of what you're doing. It's kind of like those ch uh, channels on TV to come on late at night that's got everything that you never knew you needed for sale for just seven payments of $77 for six months. And you're thinking, wait a minute, I get to figure that thing out. I mean, you can pay $400 for that thing. You, you just have no clue what's going on, but I just, I got to have it. Y'all, they get people hooked in them things. And they start buying it and they have no clue why they're doing it. That's right. Sometimes we fall for tricks of the devil because he, let, he, he tries to make us think that he has all the answers or that he'll give you the answer or we think we've got it all figured out and we can do it all on our own when all we're going to do is make matters worse. So just tonight, regardless of this election, However it turns out in the next two or three days or tomorrow or whenever they're thinking that the results is going to actually be confirmed, one way or the other, keep remembering what we've been saying all along, God is who is in control. Amen. He's who we're depending on, not the government. He's who we're depending on, not a president, not a governor, not anybody, but God himself is who our trust lies in. And no matter what goes on or what goes on around us, we can still have peace in God. I hope tonight something come out that made some kind of sense tonight. So if we would, let's just all stand. We'll ask once again, let's be praying for Brother Ray and Sister Christy. They want to hopefully have the strength to come to church Sunday morning. And I would love to see them do that. So let's pray for that. But let's just all bow our heads and we'll be dismissed.